here from his Dangerfield nightclub is Rodney Dangerfield. Now, I was a little late getting over here tonight. I took the wife and kids out for a ride, and I got lost over in Jersey, you know? <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you the way some people give you directions, you can't help but get lost. They always tell me the same thing. Let's go straight ahead. You can't miss it, just keep going straight ahead. I mean, as soon as I pull away, I come to a fork in the road. <laughs> All right, I'll tell you, I had a guy last week. He gave me uh, religious directions. Hey, you ever get these guys? He says, you go down here to St. Anne's Church, make you right. <laughs> you keep going past St. Mary's, past St. Catherine's. You'll pass Holy Trinity. You come to Our Lady of Mercy. <laughs> I'll tell you, after those directions, I don't even thank the guy. <laughs> I looked at him, I said, I bless you. <laughs> Oh, well, lately with my car, I got a new problem. My wife just got her license to drive. And I'll tell you, since my wife is driving, she now has two men in her life. Me and a body and fender man. <laughs> I was out driving my wife the other day. She told me she was going to make a U-turn. I'll tell you the letter she made. <laughs> You'll never find any alphabet. <laughs> now, I'll tell you, I always wondered how my wife got her license the first time she took the test. I found out the inspector said he wouldn't go through that again. <laughs> now, they say when you're driving, you know, watch out for the other guy. I'll tell you, when my wife is driving, you don't have to worry about the other guy. I mean, she'll get him. <laughs> now, I'll tell you, any kind of traveling, I'm unlucky. You know, I hate to fly. When I fly, I never hear nice flight, smooth flight. Every time I fly, I live in a world of fog and air pockets. <laughs> now, the last time I flew, I was really worried. The pilot made his first announcement. He asked if LaGuardia Airport was open late on Thursday night. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you, the whole flight, I was nervous. I mean, what kind of pilot, when he makes a left turn, he puts his hand out? <laughs> now, I'll tell you, it's nice to hear you laugh, you know? Because where I live, there's no laughs. I live here in New York, on the west side. I live in an older building, a much older building. I live in a kind of building like if I want hot water, I gotta let it run a long time. Well, last week I took a bath on Sunday. I started the water on Friday. <laughs> I'll tell you the one thing in my apartment in the winter, I always know how cold it is outside. I mean, whatever it is in my apartment, that's what it is outside. <laughs> in my apartment, everything is old. Well, I got the kind of shades, if you want them to go up, you got to pull them down. And if you want them to stay at one level, you have to hold them for a while. And then you let go softly, and then you walk away gently. And the other day, I had all the shades just where I wanted them, you know. The bell rang, they all went up. And when things go wrong in the apartment, I get no help from the superintendent. He won't fix a thing. Last week, I tried to trick him. I told him to come up, we're having a party. He said, should I bring something? I said, yeah, a wrench and your galoshes. <laughs> Now, I'll tell you, my apartment, nothing works. I got a radio, I can hardly hear it. I got a television set, I can't make out the picture. But when my wife opens her mouth, perfect reception. <laughs> With my wife, we got nothing but arguments. And I can never get a word in. The other night I told her, I said, there's another side to that argument. She said, I know, my mother's coming right over. <laughs> now, I'll tell you what, my wife, I mean, every time I try to be nice, she's always got a smart answer. I remember one night I was feeling good, you know. I said to her, honey, tell me, will you still love me when I'm old and bald? She said, it's tough enough while you're young and hairy. <laughs> I don't know. It's nice, you know, television. They treat you right. I mean, it's peaceful. At least you can finish your act without getting hit. <laughs> I mean, I'm used to working in tough places, tough. I work places like the Pink Elephant, the Club Jinx, Aldo's, formerly Vito's, <laughs> formerly Nunzio's. <laughs> oh, that was a tough place, Nunzio's, tough. As you entered this place, you went down two steps, physically and socially. <laughs> oh, it was a tough place, that Nunzio's. Every night the boss would say to me, be funny. My people come here to forget their troubles. 
I mean, how do you make a guy forget he's up for manslaughter? <laughs> what a place that was, Nunzios. I mean, the star of the show was a rabies-infected dog act. <laughs> oh, that boss was tough. I remember closing night on my way out. He gave me a little souvenir. And my doctor told me if this souvenir was a little more to the left, <laughs> it could have been fatal. <laughs> I don't know. I tell you, you know the trouble with me? I appeal to everyone who can do me absolutely no good. <laughs> My whole life, I don't get no respect. No respect from anyone. I found out when I was born. They bought me a baby carriage with no brakes. <laughs> Today, it's the same thing with my kids. No respect. Well, the other day, my boy came home from school. He was depressed. I said to him, why are you depressed? He told me that day he learned a new saying, like father, like son. <laughs> I, tell you, I tell you, I can't take it no more. But this afternoon, I said to my little girl, I says, when you grow up, what do you want to be? And she looked at my wife. She said, single. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, I, I love my kids, you know but sometimes they can really give it to you. I remember one day I came home from the racetrack. I had eight losers. I opened the front door, my kids jumped on me. And they said, let's play horsey. 